Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are looking at the Florida Panthers today. They've added some grit to their lineup this offseason. Is it enough for them to get into the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs? We'll be taking a look at that in today's video. If you like what we're doing here at Gold Line Hockey and want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. And let's take a look at the Florida Panthers. All right, so before we get too far into today's video, I want to give a quick plug to our Instagram and Twitter handles at goalline underscore hockey. Links will be in the description down below, as well as playing throughout this video. And make sure to check out our Patreon for a weekly podcast every Thursday night, where we talk about all things around the league over the past week. Make sure to check that out and to give us some love and support. I appreciate it. Even if you are just watching this video, I appreciate that support. We're hoping to get to 650 subscribers by the end of next week. We are very close to that now. I believe we're at 630 something. So keep it going, guys. Share this with your friends. All the support is very much appreciated. All right, so with that out of the way, the Florida Panthers are one of those teams in the Atlantic Division, a very competitive Atlantic Division, that's trying to get back to the postseason. Now, they played in the qualification round last year against the New York Islanders with a minimal amount of success. They won one game in those in that series against the Islanders. The Islanders won the series 3-1. to one. The Florida Panthers are in a window where they should win right now. You look at some of the contracts that they have. This is unbelievable that they... This is a heartbreaking look at the Florida Panthers. Oh, Man, okay, so I'm just looking at these contract numbers and they they need to be better. They need to be better. All right, so Florida Panthers, in your top six, you've got Jonathan Huberto, Alexander Barkov, and newly acquired Patrick Hornquist. Patrick Hornquist was a solid addition, and especially with the loss of, of a guy like Mike Hoffman and Evgeny Dadanov, Bringing in Patrick Hornquist was a must for the Florida Panthers, and I think they got him for a pretty good deal. Moving out the contract of Michael Matheson and a, and some player, that's a steal. Honestly, the Panthers, they, they took advantage of Jim Rutherford right there. That was a good trade by the Florida Panthers. Second line, you're definitely scraping a little bit. You've got Frank Vitrano, who looked solid at points last year. Alex Wenberg, who the Columbus Blue Jackets bought out this offseason, so shows you how things have worked out for him recently. And Owen Tippett, a former first-round pick back in the day. So there's a lot of hype around Owen Tippett that he could become a really solid player for the, uh, for the Florida Panthers. Former OHL player with the Mississauga Steelheads. A lot of potential out of Owen Tippett. And then the bottom six, there's a decent amount of change here on the third line. A completely new third line in Florida. Grigory Denisenko, a draft pick, as well as guys like Carter Verhage, who came over from the Tampa Bay Lightning, and Vinny Hinestroza on that third line, who comes over from the Arizona Coyotes. Alexi Sorella, a guy they picked up from the Carolina Hurricanes in the Vic Vincent Trocek trade. Nola Chari, who they signed last offseason, and Brett Connolly, again, who they signed last offseason to contracts bigger than they should have been, but they signed them. Carter Verhage is a guy that I would keep an eye on this season. A lot of people are saying he could be the next Jonathan Marcheseau. He was with the Tampa Bay Lightning, found some success, goes to the other coast to take on his role with the Florida Panthers, succeeds, and goes to the expansion draft. Don't be surprised if Seattle takes Carter Verhage here because a lot of people are, and again, that's a lot of hype to put around him because of what March or so has become with Vegas, but there is that ceiling of potential. People see that in Carter Verhage. I think that's a little bit much, but he could be a solid player. And then you look at defense. You've got Mackenzie Wieger, who still has to sign his contract. Aaron Ekblad, Keith Yandel, Marcus Nudevaro, who they who they got from Columbus, Anton Strawman, and Radko Gudis. So, and then obviously in goal, you've got Chris Dreiger and Sergei Barbarovsky. All right, so now let's look, let's look at, um, I had a little brain fart here. Let's look at the Florida Panthers 
acquisitions this offseason, okay? So we're going to start things off looking at Patrick Hornquist, right? We talked about him. He's on the first line for the Florida Panthers. He was the first move that they made. It was a big splash for the Florida Panthers. They acquire him from the Pittsburgh Penguins from Mike Matheson and Colton Sevier. That was the other player. And that's why they add, had to add Vinny Henestrosa on that right side once Colton Sevier left the Florida Panthers. This should help the power play as he dominates the front of the net, playing with guys like Huberto and Barkov on the wing. Uh, he's a great winger for those guys. That's his bread and butter. Picking up the trash and looking for loose change. You're going to find Hornquist batting pucks in, being a pain in the ass in front, maybe even getting in a little bit of a tussle with the goaltender in front. That is Patrick Hornquist's game. And like I said, with guys like Huberto and Barkov who play a little bit more on the perimeter, having a guy like Hornquist in the middle of the ice is huge. And I think he's going to be Joel Quenville's favorite player uh, there with the Florida Panthers. He's going to become a favorite there in Florida very, very quickly. And then another big move they picked up on the blue line was second pair right shot defenseman Marcus Nudavaro. He was acquired uh, from the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's a solid defenseman, a depth move for the Panthers. You know, he helps with their struggles on the back end, which has been a struggle for the Florida Panthers. They've had some issues with their blue line. He played 37 games last season for the Jackets. He was part of their defensive unit, and he was playing with some really solid defensemen. I mean, you're talking about guys like Wierenski and Jones and, you know, some of that talent that they have there, uh, David Savard. They've got a solid blue line there in Columbus. Um, he should see a bigger role with the with the Florida Panthers. You know, this is, he's, you know, he has a bigger role. This is what they said. He should see a bigger role with the Panthers as a consistent sixth defenseman. So... Take that with what you will. He also played in two games against the Maple Leafs in the playing round and impressed during his time on the ice. But again, he only played two games, so very limited sample size. Radko Gudis, another guy they added to this blue line. These guys are still around in the NHL because they're a pain in the ass. That's Radko Gudis' game. Radko Gudis, that's his bread and butter. Another move by the defensive unit. Bringing in Gudis brings more toughness in front of his own net, which they desperately needed because not, not against Keith Yandel or Aaron Ekblad, but that is not their game as much. Ekblad has developed into that more, but that's not really their, their strong suit. Uh, the Panthers have addressed the need to dominate the net front presence on both sides. Guys like Hornquist on the offensive side of things and Gudis on the defensive side of things. This was a good pickup for the Florida Panthers. Carter Verhage, we already talked about him, won the Stanley Cup in his eight games in the playoffs this past season. He played 52 games in the regular season with the Lightning. He is a physical player with speed that will help fill out this roster on the third line for the Florida Panthers moving forward. Wenberg, uh, he was drafted by the Blue Jackets, and he was just he was just not able to get it going. His best season was in the 2016-2017 season where he put up 59 points. He has the talent, guys. He has the talent, but because of injuries, he's just not been able to get things off the ground in Columbus. He brings a ton of speed and is a tough grinder in the corners. Once again, hopefully Bill Zito is seeing a vision with him with this signing that he can become that physicality guy that you know addresses a huge issue that we've seen with the Florida Panthers, especially this past season with the New York Islanders in that playoff series they played against the New York Islanders. And you look at the Florida Panthers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Guys, I can do math. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so the numbers I just said. So in 26 seasons in the NHL, the Florida Panthers have made the playoffs six seasons in those 26 years. So if you do the numbers, they've missed the playoffs 20 times and made it in six times. Their longest run was in their third season where they played the Colorado Avalanche, Joe Sackick and that whole group there in Colorado. They lost in the finals in four games. That's as close as they got. They lost in the quarterfinals the season after in the first round. In 2000, they lost to the Devils in four straight games. 
They lost in the quarterfinals, the first round, again to the Devils in 2011. So it was almost a decade before, well, it was more than a decade when they played again in the playoffs when Marty Brodeur was in his prime and going on that long run with the Devils back in 2012. They lost to them. They've lost the Islanders, who had not won a playoff series in two decades. Florida Panthers were in that same spot. They were first in the Atlantic that year. They lost to the Islanders in the first round in six games. And most recently, those damn New York Islanders. They lose to the Islanders again in the 2020 qualification round. So the Florida Panthers have not won a playoff series, guys, since 1996, where they went to the Stanley Cup final to lose to the Colorado Avalanche. And ev- that was the only year ever that they won a playoff series. And that was, they won three straight playoff series against the Bruins, the Flyers, and the Penguins, where they inevitably lost to the to the Avalanche. Ever since then, and before then, they have not won a playoff round. So to say that they need to get in the playoffs this year is an understatement. And I just made a video a couple days ago, a quick plug to that video. We talked about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their situation. And I talked about how that division is very much up for grabs because you look at the Tampa Bay Lightning, who I think the Lightning will be back. You've got that same team pretty much. I think they're going to be back next year. I don't see that being an issue. Despite losing guys like Shattenkirk and Bogosian, I don't think it will hurt them that much. And then you've got the other guys. You've got Boston, Toronto, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Montreal Canadiens, and the Florida Panthers. So you've got probably five teams vying for two spots because let's be honest i think the metro is going to take those wild card spots next year so i think we're going to see the three metro teams take their spots and the two wild card spots um it may be a little bit more contested but i think the atlantic division is still still on its way up i think the eastern conference is way better than the west in my opinion you've got the two juggernauts in the west if i'm going to be honest in vegas and colorado and then you've got the tertiary You've got the the, Cal, the the Canadian teams, and that's pretty much it. You've got five teams legitimately. You've got the Avs, the Golden Knights in the United States in the West Coast, and then the three, the two Alberta teams and the Canucks. And everybody else, it kind of falls under the radar. I think Dallas could be in that conversation, but again, everybody else, Chicago, um, I don't even know how I feel about St. Louis losing Petrangelo. So... That Western Conference is very much on the decline in terms of the depth. But you've got, like I said, the Florida Panthers are going to be vying for probably two spots, maybe three, in that Atlantic division. But can you completely say with utter confidence that they are better than the Boston Bruins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Montreal Canadiens, or now the Buffalo Sabres? Because I think the Canadiens and the Sabres have legitimized themselves potentially being teams That will qualify in the Stanley Cup playoff race next year. So do the Florida Panthers make it next season? History is going to tell you no. Because they've missed the playoffs 20 of the past 26 seasons in their history as an organization. So what makes you think they should get in this year? I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to stick with history here. If I was a betting man, I'd bet the Florida Panthers miss the playoffs next year. Um... Bobrovsky showed glimpses of success last year with the Panthers toward the end of the year, but he started off the season really poorly. And if he's able to continue his success off of last year, I think the Panthers are good. But again, goaltending is huge. They need Bobrovsky to be on his game. And I don't know how sold I am on the depth of their blue line. And up front, how, you know, because there's a lot of changes here. Losing Hoffman, losing Dadanov. Now you've got Hornquist and Tippett in that top six. How are those guys going to adjust? It could be an upgrade for the Florida Panthers, but it could also be a downgrade. And I got to be honest, I like their bottom six. This is a well-rounded Panthers team, a team that I think last season when they played against the Islanders, it was the first line and everybody else was just, it didn't, they didn't have the depth. But this year, I think that could change. And I don't know how I feel about that second line with Wenberg and Vetrano. But everybody else is pretty is pretty okay. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Panthers fans, fans around the NHL, what do you think of the Florida Panthers going into next season? Let me know in the comment section 
down below. And if you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching, and let's go Panthers.